Hello, people of the internet. My name is Nick from Mercy Magic, and today I'm going to show you a deck list, or deck profile, I guess, of hero kaijus. This is a very interesting deck that Jelly and I have created. My little texts have been thrown in, his texts have been thrown in, and this is the list that we have come up with. I'd also like to hear from you guys, what should we play at the next regionals? Because we have a lot of decks that we could play. I could play this or Monarchs, Jelly could play this. Ghost Tricks or Light Sworn, depending on which one you guys want. We'd love to hear your guys' feedback. We don't know when the regional is going to be, but we assume it's going to be sometime in May. So, if we can figure out what deck we're going to play before then, that would be great. So, let's get into the profile. So, we're playing Heroes, obviously, so Triple Shadow Miss isn't included. Kind of an auto-include. She gets the deck rolling, searching your mass changes and your heroes when she's sent to the graveyard, so... Uh, do Bubble Man. I hate when people play three of this card, and I hate when people try to talk to me about playing three of this card, because this card sucks. <laughs> you know, it's only good when you have no hand and you can summon it for a rank four play, and it just happens to be a water, so you can mass change it into acid or vapor. But, otherwise, this card sucks. <laughs> a lot. So, why would you want to play three of a card that's only good in one certain circumstance, when you can just play two of it and search it every other turn? Like, this card is so searchable. That's why I'm only playing two. And then I'm playing one alias because I like Koga this format. Because when the pep when the Pepe player just like he summoned five, make a huge board, you're just like, alright, here's a five thousand Koga. Attack, damage step effect, your monster zero, you die. Like really good. Uh two Goblinberg, rank four plays, get your Shadow Mist out of your hand for your to get out your Dark Laws, because it's kind of a Dark Law dot duck. And two Summoner Monk, because when you uh because uh, I'm playing a lot of spells in this deck. So, Summoner Monk lets you get to your Shadow Mist, or it lets you get to one of the other level 4 monsters. You can go Monk into Monk, and then make Master Key Beetle protecting a Kaiju, which is a very common play in the deck. Uh, speaking of Kaijus, two Gamma Seals. This card is amazing. We only have two, which is why we're playing it at two. I don't think we would play it at three, but I think I would side a third copy to bring it in against stuff like the, the regular Hero Mirror, against Monarchs, against... Hmm... Against a lot of annoying decks, because also against uh, Cosmo, because you can just give them this. The problem is that since these have to tribute, Monarchs get a lot of boost from it. So, like, March protects it, Domain would make it go up to 3,000, but you usually kill it by then. Two Kamungus. Uh, this is just a Phoenix Chain, and, like, you can. Uh, Gamma Seal is the weakest, which is why I was also thinking about going to three, because. Gamma, you can give your opponent Gamma Seal, give yourself like a Kamungus, and then immediately run it over, because all the Kaijus are stronger than this, so. And then the last monster is Dogren. Dogren is a fucking boss, like, you just get to Raigeki everything. <laughs> sure, he can't attack, but he leads to really nutty plays. It's like, you give your opponent Gamma Seal, you summon this, you attack, you kill it. Or, like, you don't even have to attack. You can just, like, nuke their board and make you waste counters, and then you get even more counters. Like, it's a really good card. But the only reason that we are running six kaijus in this deck is because in testing, we were originally playing eight kaijus, and that clogged way too much. You would either draw a lot of kaijus and no heroes, or a lot of heroes and no kaijus, and you wouldn't be able to out the board. This way, you'll consistently, like, open a kaiju, and you'll open a hero thing. So, there was... There was a video that I watched talking about probability, and so I converted it to Yu-Gi-Oh, and I sat down for a couple of hours last night, probability and doing math with this deck, and the probability of opening a kaiju with a hero card is close to 80%, and that's pretty good, thinking that you want to set up a board of, like, Dark Law Kaiju. Usually Dark Law Game Seal, because you can just run over the Game Seal. Uh, that's it for monsters. I play 17. It seems like a lot, but because we're playing the Kaiju Engine to out a lot of monsters that usually give heroes a problem, like Nachuria Beast, uh, Dark Destroyer. It, it words it. <sighs> two hero lives. The reason we're playing two is because your life points are very valuable. If you go to 4,000 and, like, your thing gets Valored or whatever you summon gets, like, or, like, this gets negated with, like, a Vanities... You can't really risk losing half your life points because all your monsters are weak as fuck until you get into the extra deck. And... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. The only reason that this card's actually in the deck is because A, it gets you to Dark Law turn 1 if they make you go first, and B, you can pitch it to Summoner Monk. 
and you can get a Dark Hole out. So, uh, triple mass change. This is how you get into the extra deck. This is how you make your boss monsters. That's how you win. Uh, double E call. I'm only playing six hero monsters, and three was so excessive. Like, let me tell you right now. I would always open, like, three heroes and two E-calls, and my deck would just be a bunch of hero monsters and no spells. By cutting E-call down to two, I have an ability to get to my hero monsters and make the deck consistent, but I'm not but I'm not sacrificing the amount of spells I have to play to make all my other cards good, like Summoner Monk and stuff. So it really helps out playing two instead of three. Double traded for consistency. There are four level eight Kaijus in this deck. And so, two trade-in is nice because if your opponent doesn't summon a monster turn one, you can just trade in your kaiju and then bring it back with Call of the Haunted. Like, Call of the Haunted is the best card in the stack. I'll, I'll show you in a little bit, but... You can, like, discard a kaiju, and then you can draw two cards, and it gives the deck consistency. It, it might get cut all together, but further testing would need to be done for that. Uh, double Instant Fusion for Norden and for Dumb Rank 4 plays. And then double Waterfront and a Terraforming. This just lets you search to your kaijus. Uh, we were also thinking about playing Kaiju Summer, which that card was good. The problem is, though, when you would set up your Dark Law boards, and you would top deck Slumber, it would kill off your Dark Law, and you want your Dark Law to stay on the board. So this way, you can just get to your Kaijus, because cards are going to go to the grave. Even against, like, the Draco Pals, they play, like, Draco Face Off, Wavering Eyes, and shit. So, like, you'll, stuff will get to the grave. Especially since we're playing a lot of normal spells. Uh, the last spell is double mass charge. This gets you back in the late game. The one miracle. This leads to nutty shit. You can make ab zero and then mass change it into acid and just nuke your opponent's board. And if you have dark luck, it's banished, which is a very common play in the deck. And the one rota, rip rota. That's it for spells. For traps, three call of the haunted. If I could play six, I'd play six. This card's fucking nuts in this deck. You can summon out a, you can summon out your Shadow Mist to get a mass change. You can summon out your Norden for another Rick Four play. Oh god, so tired. I need to stop staying up till three in the fucking morning. But you can call the haunted back your Shadow Mist and a Kaiju. Uh, sometimes you just bring back a random rank four and beat them for game with it. And then I'm playing the staples in one morning, one bottomless, and one torrential. I was trying to find room in here for some mirror forces, but I just couldn't find room for them at all. Kaijus are kind of our mirror forces in a sense, because it gets rid of our opponent's monster with a monster we can easily run over. And you can combo it with stuff like Torrential and, uh, what's the other card? Um, Instant Fusion. And, like, just do some crazy plays where you can start looping through your extra deck, getting your cards back. Like, you make a Castell and target your Kaiju, so that's in your deck again. Rather common play in this deck. So that's it for the main deck, it's 40 cards, let's move on to the extra deck. Uh, we're starting off with the two Dark Law. You don't need to play three because if you're going to make the third one, you're going to lose because that's an extra deck space that you could have for a better monster. This card's good, don't get me wrong, but because I'm playing Mass Charge, I don't need to play the third Dark Law. Uh, one Anki, this is when you want to just get through for game if your opponent has a board state. Like, if you can just beat them down early game, and then mid to late game you're running out, you can like Mass Charge, make this, attack them directly... <sighs> or if you kill their monster, uh, you get to uh, search a mass change that can turn this into a dark lot, and that beats in for the rest of the game. So, uh, one acid. Acid's the fucking shit. Like, legit. Making this on your opponent's turn when they, like, set four on their end phase is fucking disgusting. Or, like, if they set their P scales and you have dark lot out, if you go, like, dark lot, bubble man, set three pass, you can go, like, alright, mass change my bubble man into acid and nuke your pendulum scales. Like, they need another set of scales, and then they get banished. And then they're down to two cards in hand, and they can only make one ring four. And odds are, it's not going to be bigger than 2600 unless they're playing Dark Rebellion. And if they're playing Dark Rebellion, then that's why we're playing all the other back row to stop it. One Koga, because we're playing Alias, because this card's really good right now. In my opinion, you can disagree all you want, but I think this card's really good. Because if your opponent has a big board state, and you top deck Alias, or you top deck a way to search Alias, you can just summon this. It's immediately 3000 if your opponent has just one monster. And, like, you can attack something, use the effect, make it weak, and deal a bunch of damage. <sighs> and, like, you can just, like, summon alias attack for 19, mass change into Koga, boom. You just dealt 4,400 damage on your first turn. 
Uh, the Miracle Fusion target is Ab Zero, because like I said, you can mass change this into this. This will nuke all the monsters, this will nuke all the spells and traps, they don't have a board state, and it's really amazing. And because we're playing Instant Fusion, I am playing to Norden. You want to make a ring 4 plays, it can turn this and this into huge motherfucking beach sticks with Dweller. Or like, you can make Ragnar Zero and it's 2900, this will be 3000, that will be 31. Like, holy shit. Like, the fact that Dweller does that is amazing. Uh, that's it for the Fusion Monsters. That one cowboy for game... Uh, Dweller might go to two because it's fucking amazing in this deck. You want to make you want to make it so much that I might put in a second dweller and a guy a Dagosta Emerald. But anyway, uh, one Castell. This is just for things that annoy you. Like if your opponent makes like the number thirty eight, whatever the fuck douchebag, you can just go Goblinburg effect, summon something, make this, spin it, and it's fucking gone. You don't have to deal with it. Uh, one Excalibur out the Cosmo bosses because you need to make this card. Like, you can just easily just throw this down and 4k them for game. That's that's an option. Blaine Armor. I was thinking about playing Gagaga Samurai, but this is what I found first, so this is what I'm playing. And we're playing a lot of Warriors, so you can just, like, get in for 44. Like, if you make these in the same turn, which is pretty often, you can just win the game. Uh, one rank to zero. A lot of things are changing attack right now. Because, like, some of the Draco puzzles are going back to using Part Naga to out, like, Monarchs, and they're going to use that to out your shit. So you can just, like, make this and say, all right, you want to target? That's fine. I'm going to draw a card. And then the last Xyz monster is Dark Rebellion. I think this is the best one in the extra deck because you can just make it and 25 them for game, or you can make this thing huge as fuck. I've gotten this thing up to, like, 3,700, and people just don't, they can't out it. It just starts attacking things. But, like, if they make Castell and out it, then you kind of cry. But it's like, you, you take that chance when you play a deck like this. Or when you play heroes, really. Uh, that's it for the extra deck. We'll move on to the side deck. Uh, one Grand Mole. This is for Cosmo, because you can just bounce the ship's heck to their hand. It's not a targeting way to deal with them. And then they have to waste resources on summoning them again by banishing a ship. But if they have Cosmo time, it doesn't matter. One Thunder King for everything. <laughs> everything searches right now, so I'm probably going to end up moving this Thunder King to the main deck if I can find the room. Double Flying Sea for Burning Abyss for Soteller Knight. And for uh, Draco Pals, because you want you actually want to side in one of these against Draco Pals, because against like turn one when they pencil them someone like four, you can just give them a flying C, and then they're fucking stuck there. They can make like a Dynester, or they I guess they could make like an Ignister and put this back in the deck, but that's such a waste of an Ignister. So it does stop Draco Pals from doing shit. Double Veiler to stop everything. Like you side this card in almost every matchup just because you stop so much shit against the uh, Monarchs. You could hit the Edia, or you can hit the Ido, so you stop their plays. <sighs> against uh Draco Pals, you can hit like Sorcerer, Joker, you can hit like an Ignister, it does a lot of shit. Uh you you don't really side this in against like uh you can side this in the mirror, I don't like it in the mirror. The only card it's really not gonna against is Cosmo, but you don't you don't side that in against Cosmo really. Uh uh double forbidden lance for monarchs and for the mirror match, because against the mirror match you can Lance their monster to make it unaffected by mass change, and you can target either your monster to make it unaffected by Stormforth, or you can target their monster to make it unaffected by Domain, so it's stuck at 2,000. Meaning it won't be able to run over your shit. Double MST for annoying floodgates and back row and shit that I don't like. I would up this to 3, but I feel like extra decking or side decking 3 MST is a terrible idea because I don't want to side in 3 MST, and then my deck is just clog of MSTs, and I don't want to have to deal with that. Let's do that this way. Uh, Double Book of Eclipse. The reason that uh, we're citing this card is because Cosmos are a pain in the fucking dick. And when you Book of Eclipse them, all their monsters go face down. They'll flip face up on end phase. Uh, they're gonna draw a bunch of cards, and then Dark Law is gonna snipe them, and then Dark Law can just start attacking over the ships, and they'll get and they'll get uh, and they won't float. Cosmos are pretty hard matchup for you, but we side enough, and I think man enough with the Kaiju's that you should be okay. And then the last side deck card is Triple Iron Wall. As you can see, Cosmo are a terrible matchup for us. We need to side Triple Iron Wall. It also is good against uh, Infernoid, Ritual Beast, Monarch, and Necros. But the only relevant decks are Monarch and Infernoid. It just so happens there was this guy playing Necros at the last regional, and I think he like got uh, 50th place or something. Like He was doing really well with the deck somehow. It was fucking crazy. But yeah, Triple Iron Wall for Cosmo because you need it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to be able to win, honestly.
like, game one, you need, like, you can win against Kazuma game one, but, like, you need to open the fucking nuts. You need to, like, open Morning Kaiju, Dark Law. And that's how you win against Cosmo. Because, like, Cosmojo fucking wrecks you. I'm just being honest. I, I, I am just letting you know right now. I have... When someone Cosmojos me, or, like, does it twice, I have never come back and won the game. It is really hard. So, apparently, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, whatever. I'll fix it later. Anyway, guys, that's my deck profile for Hero Kaiju for the March 2016 format. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section down below. Let us know what we should play at regionals, what you guys want us to do next, either deck profiles, duels, gameplays on Dev Pro and DN. Uh, we can we can start doing that now. So anyway, I'm Nick from Mercy Magic. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time with a brand new video.